Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today we're going to be making an apron, which will be a perfect gift, I think, for Mother's Day. Um, but I've decided to make it out of what can be quite a tricky fabric. So I'm going to make it out of oil cloth. Um, I mean, this is perfect for an apron because you can simply wipe it clean. But um, sometimes when you're sewing with oil cloth, it, um, it can cause problems because the surface of the fabric can stick to the base of the foot. But fortunately, Benin has a large range of feet that we can use to stop that happening. Um, so I'm going to be looking at some of the non-stick feet. But first of all, I thought I'd uh, just have a look at some of the other feet in the range, which are really good for sewing with um, leather and plastic and oilcloth, as I've mentioned. So we're going to go through a few of those first. The first foot we're going to look at is foot 51, and this is the roller foot. Now this foot, it has three rows of rollers underneath which slide, slide over the fabric. So um, that prevents the fabric from getting stuck to the base of the foot. Um, it also has a solid front. So that's good, if, particularly if you're going over really textured, lumpy fabric uh, or fabric that's got lots of sort of um, threads on it. It's not gonna get caught inside the foot. Um, it has a, a stitch width of 5.5 mil, so you can do some nice decorative stitches with it. And um, yeah, it's just really useful for, as I say, for, um, for leather, vinyl, plastic, anything like that. So we're just going to have a little go with it now. So here I'm sewing some, um, some plastic, which um, could get stuck under a normal foot. But as I said earlier, the, these little rollers are just going to roll over and, um, and feed the fabric through nice and smoothly. We can just slide. And it's gripping nicely, I'm getting a good stitch length and it's flowing through nice and smoothly. So that's with a, a sticky fabric. So that worked, worked nicely. The next thing we're going to look at is a really lumpy fabric. So this is very thick, it's lumpy, it's got lots of tassely threads on it. But with the roller foot, it will just roll over all the, all the, uh, all the lumps and bumps and, and go through nice and smoothly. Here we go. And there we are, it's just rolling through. It's not getting caught anywhere at the front, going through nice and smoothly. And I think with a normal foot, that would have been a, a bit of a challenge. It might have got caught. So um, yeah, so that's two really good uses for the roller foot. The next foot we're gonna look at in the Benina collection is the leather roller foot. So this is quite an unusual looking foot compared to the normal feet. Um, and this rolls along and grips the fabric, but it's designed so it doesn't mark fabric. So if you were using it on a suede or a leather, the, you wouldn't leave a trail, there would be no marking. Um, it was originally designed for sewing um, gloves, for um, manufacture of gloves, because you can really turn sharp corners with it. It's a really, really good foot to use. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna show you sewing on some leather. Now it attaches as an, a normal foot would. I'm just gonna pop it on there. And I'm just using a normal straight stitch. I've got my piece of leather here. Now I'm gonna pop the leather underneath the foot. Now the fabric is really only supported on the edge um, of the roller. So it's a good idea to move your needle as close to the roller as you can go. So on my lovely 335, I'm just gonna move my needle position over have a little check yet yeah, I can go one more and now I'm nice and close to the roller and um, I should be able to sew along without leaving any marking on my leather so here we go and that's sewing through that beautifully and as we can see the, the wheels just turning around feeding it through nice and smoothly so really works great for leather and there are a couple of other applications it's good for um, one, one thing I really like to do with it is you can get a kind of a, a fake free motion effect with it. Move your fabric um, so easily, uh, you can get like, a, a, as I say, a fake free motion effect. So again, I'm just gonna sew down my length and I can really twist and turn, get some really lovely curves in. So you, know, you can really, really twist and turn without having to raise or lower the foot. So I've still got my feed dogs up but I can really, really, really twist. So this is very effective. I mean, I'm doing this with some wadding here and it's great for quilts if you wanna get a nice fluid line on some quilts. 
So that's another application of the leather roller foot. And finally, you can use it uh, to make piping instead of something like um, a zipper foot or a piping foot. So I can just wrap my cord in whatever I want to cover it with. And then I can place the wheel down and I can get really nice and close to the edge of that cord. And what I love about this is because I'm not trying to fit it, fit it into the groove of a foot at all, it doesn't really matter how thick my cord is. Um, you know, I can use it for all different sizes of cord because I'm just resting the edge of the foot up against the edge of the edge of the cord. So now I can just check now. I'm just going to move it over slightly because I don't want to <coughs> completely trap the cord. I can just move it over a little bit. There we go. That's looking good. I can hold my threads and I can just gently stitch down. And it's trapping everything in, making a nice, make, making my piping, which I could then insew into a cushion, something like that. So although it's called the leather roller foot, it's actually a very, very versatile foot. For today's project, I'm going to be using Benina's range of non-stick feet. So these feet are the same as the standard feet, except they have a special coating, which means that the fabric doesn't adhere to the base of the foot. So perfect for the oil cloth that I'm going to be using. So we have foot 52, so this is a normal zigzag foot. So this is great for all, you know, all multi-purpose jobs, and uh, I've got a stitch width of 5.5 mil. Uh, Benina also produced an open embroidery foot. Uh, this one here is uh, foot 56. So that's really, that's great if I was gonna do any embroidery on my project or if I'm gonna be doing any applique. So I can see where I'm going because it's nice and open at the front. They also do a straight stitch foot, which is perfect for top stitching and a zipper foot with guide, which is great if you were gonna insert something like a zip into a bag that was made of a tricky fabric, that would be a really useful foot to have. So the first step now is I'm going to go and get my oil cloth and we're going to start to prepare the apron. Today I'm going to be using the B335, which is the latest um, Benina in the 3 Series range, which has proved very popular. I like the nice glossy white. Um, the first stage I'm going to do is actually I'm going to do the straps for my apron. Now I'm going to make the straps out of this um, light blue twill that I've got. I'm not going to make it out of oil cloth because you know I've got to tie a knot in it and it wouldn't be practical. The oil cloth would be too stiff. So um, I'm going to start off using this. Uh, my finished straps are going to be two and a half inches wide. Uh, I've cut it out as um, three inches and uh, so I've got a half an inch seam allowance all the way round and I've drawn a 45 degree angle at the top, so that's gonna be the point of my tie. Now to sew this, I'm gonna use my foot 37, which is my quarter inch foot, so, that's, so I just need to butt that up to the edge of the fabric and whiz all the way round. Um, I'm actually gonna use stitch number five. Now this is one of my favorite stitches. This does five stitches at the beginning, and it goes five stitches forward, five stitches back, then it continues all the way around, and then you can do the same at the end. So it just gives a nice uniform um, tie off at the beginning and the end and keeps everything nice and neat. So, uh, so here we go, we're just gonna sew around this. So here we go, so it's gonna go stitch forwards, then automatically back, then forwards, and then I just need to keep it all lined up and I can sew all the way around. Now, I'm just going to set needle down, so I can just do that by pressing this button here, because when I get to the end, I want to pivot, so I'm gonna use my knee lift, so I need to have needle down set, which is shown here. Now I can carry on. So I'm gonna to get to my line, and I can stop with my needle down. I can just use my knee lift, twist round, carry on. So I kept both my hands on my work, nice and easy. I'm going to stop a quarter of an inch from the edge, which I can tell by the markings on my foot. And then again, I can twist round, it's all lining up perfectly, and I can carry on. Now I'm going to keep sewing to the end, and then when I get to the end, I'm going to press quick reverse. So I'm going to sew to the end 
going to press quick reverse because this tells the machine that I want to activate the ending sequence of stitch number five and now it's going to go backwards forwards and it's going to stop so now I can take my fabric out now I'm going to repeat this on the other strap and then I'm going to trim it and turn it inside out and give it a press and then we'll move on to the next section so the next stage is um, I've turned my straps inside out and I've pressed them and um, I'm going to top stitch round the edge otherwise they're a bit puffy and they you know they move around so I'm going to do a little top stitch all the way around the edge and to do that I'm going to use my foot 10 because it's got this excellent guide here so I can butt my strap up up against the guide and move my needle position over to um, to the far left and that will give me a nice even stitch all the way round. So I'm just going to pop my foot on and I'm just using a straight stitch on the standard setting for this and I'm going to move my needle position right the way along so it, the first position to the left and then I can use line it up with the guide and stitch round and I've still got my needle down uh, down as well here we go so just keep this up against the guide and then have a nice even stitch just means you can really whiz round with this so I'm just going to slow down and when I get to the corner one more stitch, use my knee lift, twist round, and off I go again. Nice sharp point. Great, and I'm going to repeat the process on the other strap. Right, so the next stage, I've finished making um, my strap, so we're going to move on to using the oilcloth now um, for the main body of the pinny. Now, I found this oilcloth in two different colourways, and it's got this really attractive seed head design. It's quite a modern design, so I think it's going to look really nice. So for sewing on the oilcloth, I'm going to use my foot 52, my non-stick foot, and it's got um, a nice um, shiny bottom, so it's not going to get stuck to any of the fabric. So foot 52. I'm also going to increase my stitch length. I'm using a straight stitch, but I'm going to take that up. The standard setting is 2.5, but I'm going to take that up to 3. That's because um, with tricky fabrics like oil cloth or leather or some plastics, they can tend to perforate, so you don't want too short a stitch. And also, they're quite thick, so you want that longer stitch to allow the, the thread to travel through the fabric. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the waistband over and I'm going to trap my um, straps uh, inside and I'm just going to pin that all together and then I'm going to sew around the edge. Now with oil cloth I found that I can actually put pins in it and it's fine it doesn't leave holes but if I was using something like leather uh, I might want to use some clips to hold it together before I started to sew uh, so I didn't leave holes in the fabric but this oil cloth is quite forgiving so it, it's okay to put pins in. So I'm going to pin that together, then I'm going to bring it back to my machine and sew round. So I'm going to sew round the top of the, um, the waistband and um, I've trapped my straps in between so that's going to keep those in place and I've used a pin. Now I've found um, through trial and error that when I sew, um, if I put pins in this fabric it's really difficult to get them out so I've got my trusty Benina tweezers which are the best invention ever to help me pull those pins out. Um, another tip I just wanted to mention is I find when I'm sewing, if I'm taking pins out of something, I tend to kind of fling them to the side and they go everywhere, which is really annoying and dangerous because they fall on the floor. So uh, what I like to use is the Benina Grab It. Now this has got a magnet in it, so as long as you get your pin somewhere near it, it will stick to it and stop them going everywhere. So that's another great little Benina project product that you can get. Okay, so I've got my uh, non-stick foot on and I'm just using the edge of the foot as a guide. I've got a central needle position and I've made my stitch a little bit longer and I'm gonna sew around the edge, so here we go. I'm just gonna do a little bit of back stitching at the beginning. 
Oh, and I forgot to mention I've also put a Microtex needle in. Now, it's a good idea to use a Microtex needle when you're working on oil cloth because it's got a very sharp, precise point. So it cuts through the fabric and it, you get a really nice, good quality stitch. So I changed that before. So I've got up to my pin, so I'm just going to use my tweezers just to oh, yank that fella out. And then I can carry on. This is just, it goes through so nice and smoothly with this foot on. It really, really makes it so easy to use. I'm just going to just twist around. So it's not sticking at all, gliding through nice and easily. I'm getting the correct stitch length. It's coping with the thick fabrics really well. Particularly when I get to this area, I mean, I've got four layers of oilcloth and two layers of my twill and no problems at all. So I'm stopping with my needle down, I can use my knee lift. I'm just gonna get that pin out now. Annoyingly, I've got my pin in the wrong way, but we'll there we go, got that out. Line that up, and down we go. Just gonna go back a little bit. Great, then the next stage is to attach the main body of the, um, of the pinny. Uh, what I'm gonna do first though is, um, I'm just gonna trim the edges. Right, so now I'm gonna attach the waistband to the main body of the fabric. I love the way these two tones work together. I think it's gonna look really nice. So I'm just gonna sew down, and then I'm gonna sew all the way around the edge, just to neaten the edge. Now, because it's oil cloth, um, it's not gonna fray. I don't have to do anything to it. I can just turn it under and sew round. Uh, when I'm at the curves, I've just notched the edges so it folds over nicely and I get a nice neat edge. But as I say, first of all, I'm just gonna start with sewing the waistband on. So I'm gonna go forwards and back a little bit. And I'm just gonna stitch down. I'm just gonna take those pins out as I go. And I'm just lining up the edge of my fabric with the markings on the stitch plate, which are really useful. Okay, so that's sewn down. Then now I'm just gonna neaten the edge, so I'm just gonna tuck this round and sew round. I think first of all, I'll just pop a few pins in just to hold it in place. Right, so now I'm gonna sew around the edge. I've just pinned it in place and I'm gonna make sure my stitching is lined up with the stitching I did on the top section. So we're just gonna carry on. I'm just gonna do just a couple of stitches just to secure that. And round we go. Just to neaten things up. It really is nice to work with this fabric. It, it's quite nice and easy to sew. So we're just on the final straight, just gonna go up this little section here. Make sure the seams line up. And just do a few back stitches at the end. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew along, I'm just gonna sew along the top here just so this li lies flat, because at the moment, as you can see, I've got a bit of a ridge and I want that to lie nice and flat. So I'm gonna sew right across there. So I think probably I could actually just pivot and whiz down, keeping that, keeping that pulled out. And I'll just top stitch that seam down. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's great. Now, um, I find it essential if I've got an apron that I need to have a pocket because I'm always picking stuff up and putting stuff in it. So uh, I'm going to add a contrasting pocket to the centre and that's going to be our next stage. I've sewn across the top of the pocket to neaten that up and now I'm going to attach the pocket to the main body of the apron. I'm going to use stitch five again so I've got that nice neat secure at the beginning and it's a nice strong secure so obviously there's going to be a bit of stress on the corner of the pockets with things going in hands going in and out of it so that's going to be extra strong in the corners so yeah stitch five and now I'm just going to sew my way around so I'm just going to hold my threads when I start and it's going to go forwards automatically backwards and then carry on So I'm going to sew to the end and then press my quick reverse, two more stitch, quick reverse and then it's going to go backwards, forwards and stop. So that's nice and secure. Now when I'm cooking I'm always looking for a tea towel and I can never find one. So what I've decided to do for this project is to make a little hand towel which I'm going to button onto my pinny so I've always got one handy. And um, because it's going to be a special gift for Mother's Day I wanted it to make it look nice. So I've got my piece of toweling and I'm going to put some nice contrasting binding around the edge and I'm going to do a little bit of embroidery on it. Now for this project I'm going to embroider a seed head which I'm going to take from the design of the fabric I'm using but you could always do some monogramming or do a heart or whatever you fancied on it but I think it just adds a nice touch, personal touch to the project. Uh, I'm just going to make one but you could make several so you can always put one in the wash. Um, the first job we're going to do though is we're going to neaten the edge of this toweling because it really does fray quite a lot. So to do that I'm going to use my foot 2A which is my overlock foot. Now the great thing about this foot is it has this little pin underneath. Now that pin stops your fabric from rolling. The stitches form over the pin and they stay nicely in line. Now with toweling I'm not too worried about it rolling but it just keeps all those uh, loose stray fibres in check and everything lines up nicely. So that's foot two, 2A and I'm going to use um, my overlock stitch number eight. That's quite a heavy overlock stitch and that will keep everything nice and flat and neat. Then once I've done that, I've gone all the way around the edge, I can then attach my binding just to make it look really nice. So here we go. So I'm going to line up the pin with the edge of my toweling and just stitch all the way around. Okay, so that's, that's just gone all the way around. I'm just going to go back a little bit. So now I'm just going to place my binding on and then I'm going to sew around the edge so it's start to sew the binding on. I've pinned my binding on and now I'm just going to sew it on with a running stitch. I'm just going to secure it at the beginning. And then away we go. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end where I've got my little gap. Now I want to uh, just to join these two together so uh, so I haven't got a gap. So I'm just going to pin that so I know where the join's got to go. So first of all I'm going to open these up. Like this. And just work out where that needs to be. So I'm just going to pop a pin in there like that let's take this off
I've got my binding at, at right angles and now I'm just going to sew down and then hopefully it will lay flat and I can attach it to the toweling. So we have a nice neat join. lie flat so I just need to cut off the excess and then I can sew that down. So my binding's now joined and I've got a nice neat join there so I'm just going to finish sewing this little uh, section so all the binding is, is sewn down. Great so the next stage is to complete the binding so I'm going to obviously fold it round so it's, so it's going round the back. But I thought um, instead of just hand stitching that or machine stitching it down, what I'd do is I would find a nice decorative stitch to, to tack that down with. So I'm going to use a really nice feather stitch, which on my 335 is stitch 110. So I can select hash, hash, and then 10. So I've got my feather stitch and I'm gonna change my foot to, um, to my foot 10, to my edge stitch foot, because that will help uh, keep everything in place as I sew round. So the next stage is just to pin it in place, and then I'm gonna do my feather stitch all the way around, and I'm gonna use um, this green, this green color, greeny yellow color, that's going to contrast nicely with the fabric the that's in the main body of the uh, pinny. So I'm just gonna set that up. Okay, so I've pinned my binding round, and I've got my foot 10 on because I'm going to use the guide and run it along the edge of the binding just to, to help me um, keep my stitches nice and even. And I'm going to use this feather stitch. So um, half of the stitch is going to go on the binding and the other half is just going to go into the toweling. And it's just going to make a really pretty effect around the edge uh, as well as holding the binding into place. So I've brought my threads up to the top. Um, I've changed my thread to green on the top and green on the bottom. And now I'm just going to sew round. Okay, so we're nearly there, we're just finishing going round. And the thing I love about this is it should look great on both sides. It should look just as nice on the front as the back because you're probably gonna see the front and the back of this. So we'll just finish this final section off. I'm just gonna get those to join up. I'm just gonna go back a little bit. Great, so that's it. So I've gone all the way around the edge and I think that's a really, really nice, pretty finish. And it adds a bit of interest to this uh, part of the project. Now the next thing I'm going to do, which is my favorite bit of the project, is I'm going to do some free motion on the bottom. I'm gonna do um, a seed head and I'm gonna transfer the pattern from the fabric and I'll show you how to do that in the next section. So for the final bit of detail on my little hand towel, I want an embroidery of this design, this seed head design. I could completely, um, freehand, free motion it, but um, I want it to look quite, you know, quite similar to the design on the fabric. So what I've got here is I've got some um, water soluble sticky stabiliser and I'm going to stick that on my, um, on my oil cloth and using a water soluble pen I'm just going to trace the design because I can use this, I can just then stick this on top of my toweling and it'll act as a template, but it'll also help to keep all the little fibers and you know the fluff of the um, toweling in place while I stitch on it. So I'm just going to draw around that there. I think that'll do. Then I can simply peel it off and take my 
twist it around to do it here. So I'm going to stick it down to where I want it. So I'm just going to place it there. So that's where I'm going to embroider. And then I'm going to get my hoop and hoop it up. And I'm going to use my free motion foot, drop my feed dogs, and I'm just going to free motion over this design and create my little seed head. I've selected a straight stitch and I'm going to drop my feed dogs, which I just push the button in at the side. I've got my, uh, my toweling all hooped up and I'm just going to sew over my design. But first of all, I'm going to bring my threads to the top so it doesn't all gather up underneath. Well, I've got both threads to the top. And I've got this nice clear darning foot on so I can see exactly what I'm doing. And away I go. So this is my favorite part. the end it's what I love about these machines they're so versatile you can do so many different things with them so many different techniques with all the different Benina feet it just allows you to be really really creative okay so there we go so there's our seed head embroidered and what I'm going to do is I'll take it out the hoop and remove the excess water soluble and um, and when it gets washed, the excess will, will wash away and so will the wash away pen. I've embroidered my seed head on one corner and on the other corner I want to put a button because it's going to hang off my apron. So uh, I've got a nice coordinating button and I need to measure the length of my buttonhole. So on a 335 I use my automatic buttonhole foot 3A and I choose pattern 10. So I just need to press zero and up it comes. So what I need to do is just pop my button onto the foot and measure how long I want my buttonhole to be, leaving about a mil either side to allow for the thickness. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down until this top marker meets the bottom marker and then I press quick reverse and that sets the length of my buttonhole. So I'm just going to pop the foot on, just scoops under. I want both my threads underneath my foot so I can do one whole stitch while I hold my top thread then I can get my bottom thread and just sweep it through and that brings both threads underneath the foot because it's a little bit fiddly trying to get it through that hole there. Then I just pop it underneath my fabric where I want it to go. So I can take that pin out. Oh, there it goes. And I'm going to hold my threads. I'm just going to stitch down till the markers meet and then stop and press quick reverse. So here we go. And when they meet, I can press quick reverse. And now it's going to sew backwards. And then go over and now come forwards. And then it's going to finish it off. Great, and that should be the perfect length buttonhole. So now I just trim my threads. And I can use my quick unpick just to open that buttonhole up. So what I can do is start in the middle and slide to the end. Just check that that's going to work, so that's fine. So now all I need to do is attach my button to my pinny, uh, and I'm going to use my button sewing on foot number 18 to do that. So we're going to sew the button on. Now, uh, the 335 has a button sewing on pattern, which is number 14, so I can press hash 14, 
and I'm going to drop the feed dogs. So what it does is it does like a little bar tack which holds the button down. Um, all buttons should have the hole that's the same distance apart, so it's, it's a set distance. I need to make sure my feed dog's down because you don't want it to move forward, you want it to stay on the spot. I'm using foot 18 which is our special button sewing on foot. Uh, it has this nice guide in the middle which allows you to um, have a little bit of a shank that you can wrap if you want but it's also good because you that guide needs to go in between the two holes so I've marked where I want my button to go and I'm just going to line it up with the foot now for the first hole I can just lower it in and I just want to turn my hand wheel I think it's two times oh no we're going for three and then it will click over into the right hand hole then once you know you're not going to hit your button you can put your foot down on the foot pedal and just so so here we go so that's great so that's sewn it really securely it's secured on the left and on the right so now I can raise it up just slide it off and just trim my threads and that's sewed on nice and firmly so that's my apron finished. I hope it's going to make a really nice practical gift for Mother's Day. I've enjoyed working with all the different fabrics, with the oilcloth and with the toweling. And I think adding just a little bit of detail has really lifted it and I think it, it all works well together. Um, working with the lovely range of Bonina feet, the non-stick feet, has just been so helpful when dealing with the oilcloth, which could have been a little bit tricky but was actually really, really easy to use. So I hope you've enjoyed our webinar today and we look forward to seeing you next time.